How you doing, Mel? Dude, I am doing great because I achieved some sort of strange dick sucking milestone. Oh, really? That's huge news, actually. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure if I would call it a milestone so much as a new experience, but I was sucking dick last night and I was like, oh, I kind of want to get higher at the same time. And then me and the guy whose dick I was sucking, we were like, wait a second. Should we try to do a like dick and vape and mouth simultaneously sort of thing? And so basically we tried it and it was actually cool and worked. And I had the thought last night of I should talk about this on the podcast today. So basically, like you wait, you were vaping as you were sucking the dick. Yes. And so, so you made like a suction seal around the dick with the vape on the side of your mouth and like and, and did a draw off of it. Yeah, we, we, we were trying different things. So mm -hmm. I have like 10 vapes. So at first it was, okay, if this is the shaft, and for those who are listening, uh, just imagine a shaft, you know what the... I mean, once you've seen two, you've seen them all. Or once you've seen yeah. X amount, you've seen most of them. But You see Drake's dick? Is it out? It's out. Drake's dick is out. Oh, okay. I somehow missed that. Okay, so cool. So you're going to share the Drake's dick thing with me. But uh, right before that, so it's like I had the shaft... And then I lined up the vape so that they were, you know, both parallel to each other. And so I was like, cool, maybe I can suck the dick and also inhale this vape at the same time. And I was thinking this would look really cool if we were filming it in a movie set kind of way where the vape were hidden. And it looked like I was taking a bong rip out of someone's dick because the vape was so someone's hidden. dick. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and then I, I, I can envision that. Yeah. And so um, it was really hard not to laugh during it, but I was like, Oh, it was working. I mean, obviously there's, you know, part of the dick that the vape is covering isn't getting sucked, but for the bit, you just have to commit to the bit. And then, so while I was yeah. sucking the dick and vaping at the same time, I was like, what if we made a vape shield around the dick? I mean, the dick isn't getting sucked at that point, but it is just kind of funny. So I just got all of the all 10 of the vapes I had and I made a little ring around the dick. And so really, oh, yeah, yeah. So it kind of so it was just I mean, you know, the dick didn't really need to be there. It, it's it, this it's is like not a, a functional thing. cozy. Well, yeah, like a vape cozy around. The yes. Cup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like um, what do you call those things that you put around cups? Yeah, like a cozy. Oh, a cozy. A cozy. Yeah, you literally yeah, just yeah. said that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, the dick didn't really need to be there, but it was just it was just interesting to see how it would have worked if I needed to make a vape cozy for the dick. And mm -hmm. so, and, and I mean, the head is still getting sucked because I put the the mouths of the vapes like just underneath the head, so it the was head, like, yeah. okay, so you have the head as the you know the ultimate vape or whatever, and then yeah. all the little vapes around it. Um, so I guess that's not a milestone. It was just an interesting thing that I tried. And did and it, it work? Funny. Yeah, it was cool. Uh, I mean, it's kind of like, hey, instead of doing one thing well, do you want to do two things poorly? Yeah. It was one of those situations because I'm not trying to overachieve. I'm not even trying to achieve. I'm actually trying to underachieve. So Did you film it? You know, I wanted to, but I was too lazy in the moment. But Fair. I think... I'm just going to do it again and film it again because yeah. I think it's actually a pretty cool shot, right? Because if we're filming porn or if, if him and I were filming porn, let's say you're watching it, I'm, you know, sucking his dick and the camera is on me, but the vape is hidden, you know, on the other side of the dick that the camera can't see. So it's the yeah. other side of the moon situation. We never see the dark yes, side of the moon. Yeah. And then it would yes. look like I were taking a bong rip or it was like, wow, like I'm, you know, vaping out of this guy's dick. This guy has some sort of magical dick situation. Yeah, no, no, I got you. I got you. I can, I mean, I see this perfectly in my mind's eye. Yeah. Um, and he also, and I was like, hey, could you do the same for me? And he was like, oh, I saw this thing that if you blow vape smoke into a girl's vagina, she could die. And I was like, I don't want that to happen. And of course, you know, in the moment, I wasn't like, yeah, let me go check the science behind this. And I thought, you know, yeah, maybe having vape smoke blown into my vagina might not be the best i didn't know if it was going to be like a like a let molly melt in your vagina kind of situation and have it be Is really good thing? yeah i think i talked about it on a previous episode i can't remember but it did happen to me on accident once when i was a teenager where i was trying to sneak molly into a club or a festival so i wrapped it in toilet paper and i shoved it up my vagina but then it melted mm -hmm. while i was in line and yeah. 
dissolved and that was like okay i need to not do it this way again i need to you know get the plastic tubes or put it in my that just taught me that if i'm going to sneak stuff up my vagina that it needs to be in something that isn't going to you know disintegrate like toilet paper they do yeah, sell yeah. them on i don't know amazon or whatever you know what fuck it they, they sell uh, them in some, some random place because i don't want, i don't want to advertise it for them for free un- unless they pay me but they do sell you know vaginal inserts and anal inserts for sneaking drugs into places i did not know that yeah but that's very interesting yeah but anyway so drake's dick is out yeah drake's dick is on the loose um leaked what's the full story i how did this come about so it was just on twitter i don't know where it came from who it came from it's a video of it's just him it's not like a porno with like another chick in it i'm assuming he sent it to someone uh hog big big hog Mm -hmm. uh kind of like kind of flopping around like it's not even fully hard and it's still quite uh, uh uh this it's still quite big um so it's yeah it's 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 a considerable size. I will go, go on Twitter and look. I can send you the link so you can check out uh, his his dick size. But it's like it's it's when a did moment this happen? In history very recently, recently. Okay, not that long ago. Okay. Um, but uh, but yeah, his hog is on the loose. Um, yeah, either, I don't know if you'll still be able to find it on Twitter, but yeah, but I'm pretty sure. I think I downloaded the video so because I had you to downloaded the video. It. I downloaded the video because I was like, well, I got my content about it. Yeah, you got to keep the receipts. Exactly. So I think I have it like saved still. So even if the links aren't up, I can send that your way. And apparently (laughs) Drake's reaction has been quite positive. He hasn't really said anything. Um, What's his name? You know, Aiden. What's it? Aiden Aiden Ross. Ross. Aiden Ross made a video talking about like, oh, this is crazy. He's like texting Drake. Yeah, he's big Twitch guy. I don't know if he's maybe he got kicked off of Twitch. He's on Kick now, but he's big. He's popular online personality. Um, he uh, put out. Yeah, he put out like this. Uh, the this thing of him texting Drake, or he was like texting Drake live on stream. Like I think he said, "It's crazy, man. You're gifted, like in being popular financially, musically, and you have a fat hog. Like that's it's like a little unfair." And then Drake just sent some laughing emojis back to him. When things like that happen, I always question the validity of the clips because there are all these deep fakes going. I know back then there was like the Taylor Swift deep fake porno stuff. It's just hard to tell if the digital dicks we're seeing on the internet are are real these days. I it's think so this hard. is real. It's okay. pretty grainy. I mean, maybe that was the effect you put on to make it seem more real, but it seems from Drake's reaction it seems it seems real it seems like a real and i wouldn't be upset if i was drake and that was my hog that got on the loose yeah it's like, good hog you know yeah good hog. okay cool it's only gonna so, move units so the dick is out the dick is out yeah i would i would like recommend like it's it's kind of like not looking up is like being out of the loop being out of touch it's like not watching the moon landing or something like you gotta just oh gotta and i would hate it. to be out of touch and you know feel free to send me the video as soon as possible just for personal reasons i love that you downloaded it you were like i'm gonna get ahead of the game i just need to make yeah. sure i have this i need it it's gonna be this is content heavy like everyone's gonna be talking about this my whole time actually not enough of my timeline was talking about drake's hog mm. not enough mm-hmm. like i like for the amount i follow a lot of meme pages that have kind of fallen off. Like there's this weird thing that shifted in meme pages recently. And I think it's because you get so big, you're really worried about your platform. And because then once you have like 12 million people Mm -hmm. on Instagram, it's like, well, I can't afford to get violations. So they just do like really safe, like, oh, this is current events. This is a funny clip from eight years ago. What blah, 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 just that kind of shit. Where before when these pages were coming up, like wasted, wasted i unfollowed recently but they used to do like the craziest like skateboard slams and like wild Mm -hmm. shit and now it's like just like i don't know it's like the office clips and i'm like get the fuck out of here i need like raunchy wild shit in my algo constantly that's what i'm looking for this is the shit i'm online for yeah i Um, mean that is somewhat the purpose of life yeah yeah yeah, because we were here to eat and fuck or eat and drink and fuck sorry i've missed the yeah. drinking part 
and TikTok is really because TikTok's so sensitive with what they allow to go through. So they're like one of the worst for it in terms of finding like what's the hot shit. They have like their own dramas and shit going on over there. Um, I cannot wait for the I, new version of TikTok to come out because I think what you're describing is just a very real phenomenon where you get an app or a page that's putting out a bunch of really fun, awesome, like authentic raw content that you like. Yeah. And then as it becomes more mainstream or commercialized, then it inevitably has to dilute itself. It, I remember exactly. when TikTok was actually fun and funny yeah, because it, back in the pandemic, it, that stuff was awesome. You know, the stuff that I used to be able to get away with back then versus now, like, now I, I used to I used to get away with my butt clenching videos, you know, like it was yeah, such yeah. a good punchline to just have. And I didn't care that I was doing it over and over again, because I personally just like when the punchline is like, and then it was up her ass and then it was in yeah. her ass, you know, you it's know, fun. it's like, where it's is nice this skit closer. going? And then if I couldn't think yeah. of an ender, I would just go back to my ass and I would just clench something within it, you know, whether it's, you know, my IRS forms, a spatula, um, you know, an, an iPhone charger, you know, that would be interesting to be like to charge people to charge their iPhone in between my ass cheeks. But I miss 2020 and 2021 TikTok when we could get away with that stuff, you know? Like, I think there's yeah. always a new thing like that. You know, forever ago, it was Vine. That was the original, or yeah. not the original. I mean, I mean, really, if we want to go forever ago, it was cavemen drawing dicks in caves. But if we were to go in our timeline, did. it was, I don't know, 4chan. Well, maybe, I, maybe I won't bring 4chan into this, but... No, but we do need we do need something that's new and like raunchy and raw because it does feel online. Like I think Instagram is the best for it right now for keeping it raw. There's still some really fun like raw pages. And maybe I'm just not following the right people on TikTok, but I feel like it's just too censored. And I'm not a Twitter person either. I think there is some good raw stuff on Twitter. I'm learning that like Twitter first. Twitter like dick drake's dick out pops on twitter mm -hmm. like the whole i think there was something with aiden ross a little while ago i where saw played, that i was trying to tag you in a clip and i saw that you were banned on tiktok or you get your account oh i'm back now oh I'm okay back, yeah baby. no because i same thing happens to me where you know we are giving the people what they want and yeah I guess it's, it is. It is yeah, what they it's, want. It's what but, they want, and then we just keep getting on and off band. And it's like, sorry, I'm so funny and sexy, and people love it. It's this thing is people love it. Like I understand they're pro they got to protect their their income and their brand deals and their whatever, whatever. But whatever. I need they to protect my back, and you need to protect your back because both of us are, you know, suffering severe back pain from carrying these fucking apps. With our yeah. content, you know, I'm suffering, just as DJ Khaled says, you know, suffering from success. Uh, there's this meme of this, I don't know, some Jesus guy. I think it is Jesus. I don't know why I said Jesus guy. Uh, but he has like a giant boulder on his shoulders and he's struggling. And the caption is like carrying the weight of being hot and funny. And I really yeah. relate to that. You know, I think I felt um, very seen by that. Yeah, no, no, no. I think I it, it is something will come along. I I've made this prediction for a while, and I've made it in several different places. So when it actually happens, I'm gonna like make a compilation of my clips if Che was right. Um, mm -hmm. But we're in kind of like what would be like the '80s cable era of these platforms of like social media platforms where it's like you got a lot of sitcoms everything's safe game shows no one's swearing on tv it's all like very clean cut run by a certain perspective and then you're going to get what is basically the equivalent of hbo for these platforms because you have uh you're going to have a, a, a generation of people like i would say it's probably like maybe five to ten years younger than me who grew up like really consuming YouTube like like cable like that like I didn't really do that I don't think a lot of my friends really did that either but there was a definitely a full generation of people that did that and they're going to get older and they're going to want to consume older more mature content and someone's going to create what is like an HBO to uh, uh, a, a a social media platform which will like yeah you can have a sketch where there's tits in it if that's what's necessary or has like cum jokes and you can say fuck and you can have like like a sex scene or something and it you're not necessarily going to show penetration but you can do stuff that is a little bit pushing the boundaries because that's what people are going to grow up and they're like hey, i'm an adult now i want adult content yeah i i remember back in 2020 
I did a lip sync or I think I I did one of those things where I green screened myself in front of the video. But back on YouTube forever ago, there was this thing called the sex offender shuffle. Do you know what I'm talking about? No, no, I don't remember. this. Okay, so I believe it was in response to some law was passed. It's the law that's like if you're a sex offender, you have to alert everybody in your neighborhood uh, yeah. wh- which, whenever that was, whether it's 10 or 20 years ago, I don't understand time because I don't understand a lot of concepts because time is a flat circle. Yeah, exactly. But there, somebody made this song that was speaking to that, where it's just like speaking of the, <laughs> um, because the purpose of it is to help the community. Feel, well, I, I thought the old purpose of it was to help the community to feel more safe knowing when there's sex offenders mm-hmm. in your area, but it actually achieves the it, like, and it makes sense in theory. It's like, yeah, like, you know, you should know if there's a sex offender in your area. However, similar to the citizen app, it's like, how much is the awareness really helping you in the situation? Do you know the citizen app mm. where it alerts you of all I've the crimes that are near of you? Citizen, yeah, I'm not, I'm not super familiar. I don't have it. I have it or never used it, but I know it. Like, yeah, it lets you know, like, hey, this is going on. Yeah, but but it's also like, how much is this really affecting? It's kind of like having the news on all the time. Or obviously, it's important to stay informed, but the news is heavily, uh, you know, biased and sensationalized these days. But you know, back to yeah. the sex offender shuffle so there's a song called the sex offender shuffle and i have it memorized that's okay and i even maybe made a tiktok dance to it because it's it's really catchy it's very it's very catchy and you know a lot of people were mad at me and of course i'm not encouraging being a sex offender i'm i'm not encouraging that however and and jokes can be about anything yeah and and the beauty of jokes is like you're sometimes saying the funniest thing isn't the most appropriate thing sometimes it's the most offensive and wrong thing yeah and then i remember you know i actually i even got a group of people i really don't know if this video is still up but i got a group of people i think there are about 10 of us where we were all standing in a triangle on tennis court and i had somebody filming from a higher point and it was it was all of us in a triangle doing the dance that i came up with to the sex offender shuffle while also chanting it out loud and i'm pretty sure it goes the state of florida has asked us to disclose our sexual crimes to you uh and and it's really funny and it just has each person in the music video go up and talk about like the thing that they what? did wrong and, and it and yeah. the point of the video is to show that like even the even though the intention behind that law being passed was rooted in in good things there's also what it's actually doing where it's like hey i feel so great knowing that there are all these sex offenders around sex me offenders, and, yeah. and it's and it's it is funny it's like this the sex offender shuffle like it's it was like a ymca but for sex offenders and i like that yeah I like and it. i i mean i highly recommend watching it's just it's just great but we all have those pieces of content that we're like i'm very proud of this one maybe it wasn't the best performing one but this is the one that i really think was the one of the greatest cleverest ones I yes came yeah what what are some examples of that for you where you're like this was something that i really appreciated didn't necessarily do well online but i really liked it uh there's one where i was like oh this is a a home run and it did decent like it didn't do poorly but i was like this is my personal favorite and it was uh are you familiar with the fan bus do you know the fan bus what's fan bus fan bus is like new age bang bus it's run by this i can't remember what her name is but she's huge on of and um and like instagram and stuff she has like five million instagram followers like she's big time i don't know if she does like full-on porn i would assume she does um, but based out of miami and so it's basically the fan buzz has like different of girls come on and they interview them like did you see that thing that went super viral with baby alien sounds familiar refresh my memory and it's also for the baby podcast alien listeners is born with like some type of birth defect i'm not sure what it is but he's like a little tiny guy he kind of has like a a little head and stuff too um and i i don't i don't know what the birth defect is but he he goes on the fan bus and he says that he's a virgin he's like yeah i'm a virgin i've never had sex before and then they did this thing where they're like well we're gonna get you laid on the fan bus and then he banged a couple of f models then he came back and like had a threesome and it was like a whole they did like a whole series with baby alien that went crazy viral like the baby alien stuff like people were making content about it like this is crazy people are like i'm jealous of him blah 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 da, da, da. um but 
fan bus does all these interviews with these different OF girls. And one of them, um, they're interviewing her and they're like, oh, what's your sexual fantasy? And she's like, I want to be locked in a room with my boyfriend, his three brothers, his dad, his uncle, his grandpa. And then it cuts to me and I'm standing there like in a room with my shirt off. And I'm like, oh, it's just so nice that we can all get together. Like this. Uh, <laughs> I love and I'm this. Like, that, that's the funny. That's the bit. Because like everyone wants to react to that and be like, oh, she's for the streets or this is gross or fucking some sort of incest joke or something. Of course, because that's what she's referencing. I, and also, I think these are things are all said salacious to like get traction i don't think any of these girls are going on being like oh this is a true story that i'm telling you right now mm -hmm. um but uh in that i was like that's that's the bit the bit is that how often do you get that much family together and you all get to see <laughs> each other and hang out that's rare that's a hard thing to do people cancel people are busy i remember when i would play dungeons and dragons with my friends that was the hardest part of dungeons and dragons was finding a day we could all hang out i mean that's the most uh, unrealistic part of these scenarios, you know, the, the unrealistic yeah, the fantasy. Yeah. Is, I mean, like the uh, most unrealistic part of any of these fantasies is just finding a time that works for everybody because scheduling exactly. is the hardest part. And it's much more likely that you'll be able to get your entire extended family all in a room together um, to film this porno as opposed to just getting together in general, because at least there's a common goal. Yeah. And I think the fetish things in general are that is like you have to be kind of dead. It has to be like a hobby or more like you kind of have to be somewhat dedicated to it. Like if you're like in Shabari or something like that, and you're doing that thing where you like tie chicks up in ropes or you're getting tied up in ropes. Like there's a whole thing. You got to go to a guy's place. He has to have a studio. He's got to fucking tie you up. And then you got to like take all these pictures and, you, and it like hurts and you got to recover from it. And it's like a whole thing that you'd need to be into that and then you need people who are into it and you need to get like involved in that community and like you need to find like like-minded people that you want to work with oh and i also got like fucking tea from the shibari community because i talked to some chick who's in it what is shibari where the, like shibari's uh it's this like bondage have you ever seen bondage where a girl's like tied up in ropes and it's almost like artistic and she'll be like yes from yes something. yes no 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 yeah i've seen a lot of instagram accounts like that where you yeah. know it is it's kind of like a Cirque de Soleil sort of aerial yeah. sort of thing where I just see those and I'm like, they are so athletic. Mm -hmm. I really admired this skill set. I didn't even know it was for sex at first. I was like, wow, you're really flexible and you're comfortable hanging like that with little circulation. And I, I would just be afraid of, of falling, if anything. And I'm like, people are so athletic. Yeah, and I think that like to do that, it, it it you need to be somewhat dedicated to it. And then yeah, I've heard that like within those communities, people get pissed off because say there's like one person who's tying people up, and you work with him, and you do a shoot, and then you go work with another guy. They'll be like, "Why'd you go work with him?" Like blah blah blah. I thought you were like my model, and blah blah blah. Like it's like you would think. It's it just it doesn't matter where you go. It doesn't matter if you're in comedy, if you're in content, if you're in fucking movies or working uh, uh, whatever a construction job. You get the same little grievances that everyone has all the time. But you think like, oh, these are very like sex positive, open groups. Like they're going to be open minded and welcoming to all these different things. It's like, no, no, they have the same fucking beefs that we all have wow. all the time. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, so I guess just everybody is subject to the human experience no matter what. Even mm -hmm. um, really successful, you said, Shibari artists? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, and I learned about the hook hooking community as well. Like those chicks who get like hooks on their back and like hang. Suspension, I think it's called. Where you're like uh, suspended from like hooks in your skin. And you'll just oh, like hang God. and get like. Ouch. Have you, ever, you have, have you ever seen that? No, let's talk about it more though. So uh, w w at first when you said hooks, I was like, oh, they're wearing a backpack with a hook. Like they're going bungee no. jumping. Oh my God. It, yeah, it goes like directly into their skin. And uh, that that's like a whole thing too. Like if you're into that, you have to like do it with a person who's like good good at it and like knows how to like put the needles in and all this stuff. And then there's all this like care involved in it. Like if you... Well, no shit. Like... Yeah, like if you get multiple hooks in your back, it's like easier because the weight's dis distributed a little bit better, but then your healing process is so much longer. So some people want to do less hooks, which is going to be more painful in the moment, but then your healing process later okay, is Okay, I need be to easier. understand a little more about how this works, especially for the like I'm trying to visualize this. So, how big are these hooks? Where in their backs are they going? Is it a hook that's tied to a string? Like how 
uh, it, yeah. like, and they're tied to the ceiling. Like how far above the ground are they? I feel like like they're just a, there seems to be so much that can go wrong. Like I think so. I guess it's depending where you do it. There's certain things like if you're at like some sort of. I think it's a big in like the tattoo piercing community because it is like a form of piercing. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, tattoo piercing community. Got it. Yeah. So then you'll like take like basically like a, a glob of skin, like a bump of skin and you put a certain <gasps> gauge needle through it to make the hole. And then you put the hook through that. Oh my and then, God. So, and then that's what like kind of lifts you up off your skin. And I think in the moment, from what I've heard from this one person who I talked to who did it, in the moment, you don't really feel the pain. You feel the pain at, like, the point of incision. I mean, I'm feeling and pain now just from imagining it. You know, you're saying, well, you don't feel the pain. I mean, like, well, I think it's because the pain is being transferred to the viewer or to me that's listening to it and yeah. imagining it. I mean, and you know, it, as an empath, yeah, like an I feel the pain of these, of the, the hooked girls or the hooked yeah, boys, hooked whoever they're really into it and these are also people that are like they're doing a whole but like a lot of these uh, i shouldn't say a lot of these i'm not too informed but the people who i've heard talk about it like they got some other stuff going on that's like split tongues and uh, and body modifications and stuff like that so they're no stranger yeah i know i can't imagine that getting hooked is like your first piercing yeah where you yeah yeah exactly where you where you start this whole journey no it, you're like deep in the realm of this kind of stuff yeah i feel like um, that's having sex before your first kiss a little bit yeah 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 exactly, so it was like hey i don't exactly. have my ears pierced but i do have 10 hooks in my back for this hyper specific thing oh wait wait so the people who are getting hooked that's their fetish they enjoy that i don't know if it's like a fetish i don't know if it's a sex thing i'm just trying to understand the motivation i think it's like it is from what i've heard like doing shibari and stuff like that it's like you get a little bit of a high off of it from the pain right like it is you get like an adrenaline rush from being hung by your skin above the ground so you, it is almost like a drug i see um like one That's so girl interesting i talked to because i feel like there are so many other ways of feeling adrenaline but yeah, and, yeah but yeah. you know it but it does make sense to me like this being one of the ways i i I, i'm i'm genuine i'm just speechless imagining this and so okay so but it's not a sex thing because as soon as you said that i was like and they're having sex in these positions so is it like is it like they only have sex with other people who are also hooked or does someone climb up on a ladder and start having sex with like how is this working uh, I think I don't think there's any sex involved in oh, any okay. of the hook stuff. Like I think it it is just, and I don't even think the shibari stuff is necessarily sex either. I think that is more like art in right. a way. That's like, yeah, a lady tied up, and it's like this is what we can do. I think it will, like, it can obviously lead into like bondage and stuff like that. The shibari specifically, like, there was one chick I talked to who said like, she's like, I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't do any drugs. She's like, this is on like one of my few releases is like she gets tied up and then does like some intense bondage where I she's mean, like getting the shit beat seems- out of her. That that checks out because every time, <laughs> uh, every time there's an interview with someone who is doing some sort of insane physical thing, like they're a marathon runner or they are excelling in some sort of like bodybuilding, weightlifting sort of thing, mm. I, I find that they tend to say something similar where they're like, "Yeah, like you know, I don't do like sex or drugs." or school or social interaction or eat food or breathe. I just do this one thing. And, and this is like, yeah. And that's the way like that they a- get it. Like I had a, one of my best friends. Um, she used to be one of those intense sports people where she, uh, we went to Berkeley together. She was on the Cal cycling team. Uh, she would do these crazy, you know, triathlons where, you know, you're running, biking, swimming in the for multiple days. I don't even know how that shit works. It's just, lots of athleticism and very intense and then she quit once she discovered weed and (laughs) yeah no and no like and and i remember you know we were in college together and she was doing all of this insane athletic stuff and you know i got into drugs much earlier than her and i was trying to put her on some stuff and i was like hey like you know let's smoke weed together you know let's try acid whatever and then you know but everybody has to get there on their on their own and so 
by the time it was a few years after we had graduated, I had been, you know, deep into the drug scene for maybe like five, six years at this point. And I remember um, a couple of years ago when she, you know, started getting into weed and then we did ask it together for the first time, she had a heart to heart with me and was just like, I did not need to do all that athletic stuff. Like I did not need to bike a hundred miles. I did not need to, you know, hike Mount Fuji or whatever. I didn't realize that I just, she, she was just genuinely like doing those things is the only way I'm going to feel better with all this chaos inside my mind. But now that I've discovered weed and edibles, it's actually, um, pause. There's some sort of emergency going on in your building? Yeah. Um, what the actual fuck? They did not tell me about this. Uh, sorry. Can we pause the recording? Um, yeah, it might let not me be just... planned. All right. We're back. Okay, cool. Everything's fine. You know, sometimes the building alarm goes off and it's not an actual emergency. Or maybe it is and I'm just sitting here. But, you know, it's all about priorities. I'd much rather, you know, sit here and talk about come with you than maybe save my life from the burning fire. You know, life's not that important anyway. And Mm -hmm. if I'm going to have it end, I might as well end with a nut with a bang. No, I'm just kidding. Don't kill yourself guys. Uh, You're too sexy. And also you'll die anyway. So you should just wait, stream that song. Yeah, dude. Okay. Back to our conversation. I wouldn't doing well, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. I am very excited. So shout out to everybody who is streaming. Don't kill yourself. You'll die anyway. Um, our song's blowing up right Mm -hmm. now and it makes me feel so good. Like I was just like, Oh, this is better than sex. No, 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 no. It's not. I mean, it is. It's the same amount of good in a different way. Yeah. No, it is good. You know, like again, uh, thing you worked on. Have have you seen it? uh, Yeah. 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 I've, I've seen like all, all the content you've been putting out around it. Uh, I've been all over that. Dude. Thank you. Cause I'm like, Whoa, people are really resonating with this. And I was very scared as how as to how the public would react to the phrase suicide is cringe Mm -hmm. because I didn't want it to be misinterpreted. Like the, the basis behind it is, you know, for people who are in that state of mind who are going to kill themselves, you know, they tend to react well to things that are in the shame category. Mm -hmm. So it's like, Hey, don't do that. Like that's crazy. And, you know, in the song I say, you know, Suicide is cringe and cringe is worse than death, which it is, I feel. Cringe is worse I do than think death. that yeah, I do think that cringe is worse than death and that and you know, I wrote this song for myself in times where I was feeling that way and I just had to be like y- you know, there would be all these people who were like, "Don't worry, like you haven't, you know, eaten all the food that you think you're going to enjoy. There's there's so much light that you haven't experienced. Like you have not experienced all the love that you'll have in this lifetime. And I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. That's like some future hope stuff. But what's happening now? What can I feel now? Oh, shame and wanting to avoid that shame. Cringe. Oh, God. Like, yeah. I don't want to like, especially if, you know, the mass consensus later on is that suicide is cringe. Then I'll just be cringe. For, you know, like cringe is forever. Like cringe when you is die, that forever. Happens once, but cringe is forever. Like I don't. And I was like, oh, I don't want to, you know, be memorialized as like a cringe. Uh, anyway, so I also, of course, there's been a little bit of backlash being like, this is so insensitive. But that's kind of uh, with everything. So that it, is the like, realm of creating content or comedy yeah, in yeah. any aspect. People Yeah, but um but overall the the positive reaction to negative reaction ratio is is really solid. So I'm like, hell yeah, like I'm moving forward with this message. Don't kill yourself. Suicide is cringe and cringe lasts forever. And also and it's like, that. I don't know, it's a positive message. Don't kill yourself. It is a positive message, yeah. Yeah, you can't be upset. People trying to spread yeah. positivity. It's like, what are you doing on the day to day? It's trying to spread yeah. negativity. Um, oh yeah. man, oh dude, uh, what's this guy? James something Chong or something like that. Have you guys seen this guy on Twitter? I, I love this dude. Like, I don't love him in a serious sense. Uh, so I got to see if I can find this. James. I think it's James. Who is this James Chong person? I mean, I like anything that rhymes with Ong. Ong is my last name. Chong. Ong's a good name. Dong. What? Ian Miles Chong. This guy does the funniest cringe stuff. He's clearly like, um, like, anti-woke that kind of stuff like that's his whole personality um Mm -hmm. which is like i think if you're on either end of the spectrum if you're like i hate everything that is like not woke and then if you're like woke is fucking is the death of america if you're on either on any of that 
wavelength, I'm like, you get that can't be your personality. It just sucks. It's annoying. And the, you- no, no, no. I think any sort of extremism historically has never worked and is unsustainable. Yes. Like South Park literally just did a whole episode about this called Into the Panderverse, where it just shows you know, both sides of the woke versus anti-woke argument of like, hey, extremism in all cases is seems to, you know, not be sustainable because it doesn't reflect the nuances of life. But, you know, people don't like to think myself included. Um, But back to this guy, but he's Chong. just so he's so lame, dude. Um, Like he uh, what is he doing? Who is this person? He's on Twitter and he just tweets uh stuff. And so I love watching because I think it's so funny. But he tweeted like um, uh, uh when e- Elon Musk tweeted a little while ago when the GTA six trailer came out, he was like, oh, I just couldn't get through to the beginning of GTA five when you had to shoot the police. It just made me uneasy. And then it's like, <laughs> it's just like, bro, fucking so lame, dude. It's a video game. Like, mm-hmm. chill out. Um, mm-hmm. Mr. Virtue signaling over here. And then Ian Miles Chong, like, quote tweeted it was like, I was the same way. It just it feels wrong to do that in any form of media or something like that. And everyone's just like, bro, for one, stop dick riding Elon so goddamn hard. Yeah. Uh, all his stuff is like that. He like makes these AI art things where he'll take like a chick's thirst trap and he's like, I'm using AI art to show what she would have looked like if she had a good father. <laughs> And it's like her with like kids. Oh my and stuff. god! It's so funny, dude. It's so Jesus. Funny. Like it's like, bro, just go. Like, dude, it's so. Mm, sorry, my zin's flying around my mouth. It's so lame. It's so lame. Like mm-hmm. it's like. You know, like, what, I don't care what anyone's opinion is on any of that. Like, you don't have to be fucking in. If you, if you don't want to consume OF content or thoughts or whatever that is, and you're like, man, I, I that's just not me, whatever. It's like, just let people do whatever the fuck they want to do. That's always my policy. Um, but to make like AI art of like, yo, this is, this is what she would look like if she had a good father and a family and this, the whole like nuclear family thing. If that's what you want, do that. Go have the nuclear family. Go have the white picket fence. Go do, go do it. I support that shit. I support monogamy and all that stuff. But then if people want to fucking ratchet out and live a ratchet life, it's like, yo, I support that shit of fucking fuck ton as well. It's like, just do whatever you want. And it also doesn't impede on your life. Like if someone, has an OnlyFans and is like making their income through blah 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 and is doing whatever. And you're with like, their life. how does this affect you? And and you know because the reason they're doing that is not from a place of this is affecting me. It's just like a cry for help in some ways. It's like, hey, you know, I don't have anyone who loves me in real life who is willing to listen to me and all my insane thoughts. Therefore, I need to express it and be heard. And like, there's this meme that I saw where it's like, if you can't say anything nice, then just say it on the internet. (laughs) That's funny. (laughs) That's very funny. I like that. You can't say anything nice. Just say it on the internet because that's where that stuff lives. Yeah, And I, I just think it's so like, there's obviously this wild mentality towards relationships where like people are like, really criticizing anyone who's like non-monogamous or in porn or all that kind of stuff and like obviously it's going to have an effect on your relationship but they're like how are you going to maintain a relationship it's going to be horrible blah 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 it's like dude monogamous relationships are crumbling every day all the time a marriage has like a yeah. fucking 50 percent failure rate i think it's even higher now i think it's like 60 percent failure rate and it's like is it is it, 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 it the relationships in general are hard and it's like if these people are they're out doing their thing and they're figuring out their thing on their end like i said it doesn't take away from you if you want to have like a completely what would be like standard or normal monogamous relationship with someone who's slept with two people other than you and you have a very like whatever your values are and you align then it's like do that and like and these other people are living a different way it's like just live side by side with them and you can hang out with them and talk i with wonder them. if it's their kid kink to, to be in other people's business like that maybe. like i wonder if it's their kink because you know everybody ha- there's a whole everybody has the same 24 hours and typically how you spend your time it's usually in some sort of prioritized order yeah. of what feels the best to you mm-hmm. and in life you know the things that feel the best are <laughs> human connection you know love intimacy um general stimulation entertainment food sex and those are the things that people tend to prioritize in terms of how they spend their free time outside of you know the thing that you have to do like 
work and body maintenance yeah. and like talking to your parents. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, I don't talk to my parents, but uh, uh, no, just kidding. just kidding. Love you, mom and dad, who definitely don't listen to this. You know what? I'm gonna just stop. I'm gonna just stop referencing my parents <sighs> in this sex drugs podcast. Let's just. I brought it on myself, digging myself out of this hole. Let's get back to <laughs> what we were saying. Um, but yeah, what if it is their kink because i when you're doing that it means you don't have anything better going on right like it feel it's much more fun to hang out with your friends and be hot and sexy than to be on your computer and really get into your life philosophy as to how someone else yeah is living their life i think i think that it's like it all stems from like I don't want to say religion because I don't. I don't necessarily think it's like just people get a belief system. It doesn't have to be a religion. Whatever right. they believe is the structure of how things are, and they believe that their mm-hmm. way is right. Uh, and I do honestly believe that let some of these people think that like they need to change society because they see society is crumbling and they need to improve it in a certain way and that the way people are behaving is the root cause of any sort of trouble we have which i don't think it is it's like man you're gonna spend time changing these chicks through ai art and be like oh these we need to better these people it's like bro there's companies that are like buying water right now like ownership of water and like poisoning Mm -hmm. our food supply and like buying up all the real estate so we can't like have clean water or clean food or a place to live it's like maybe we go that's what we put our focus on and when we're going to be upset about something and we leave porn yeah. alone for now. Um, but uh, yeah, like I know. I mean, the logic is the logic is flawed, you know, and like people will create their own logic to advance their own personal motivations. Like I, uh, I think I already shed on this in a previous episode, but like ugh, AI generated art. You don't, like, okay? I like some of it. I like some of it. I do like some of it. I I do like some of it. However, I think that there's a huge proportion of people who are like, we are investing in this because this is so important Mm -hmm. versus AI generated tax forms. Yeah. AI generated literally any other huge problem in this country, like healthcare. Yeah, no, I think, I I think the movement towards AI and it's like sort of like dominance in our world is inevitable. I'm actually trying to use it more. I'm like, I got a chat GTP on my phone. I don't want to be one of those old people that it's like, I remember my parents, like the resistance to like video games and stuff. It's like, no, this Mm -hmm. is like, it's coming and it's going, I think it's going to better our lives. Oh, you're also. Oh my God. My alarm is going off again. I think. Okay. Sorry. We're going to have to pause this, but I'm pretty sure somebody is begging for attention. Yeah. In this (laughs) building. I think that somebody's going through a breakup and they're just trying to make everybody else suffer. Like, I, I mean, I can see, you know, the rest of the units from my. This kind of feels to me like when you're trying to have a conversation with someone on the side of the road and then an ambulance goes by mm-hmm. or like those motorcycles come by. And you got to like pause um, for a second. You're like, uh. yeah, sorry, let's pause. OK, we're back. And, you know, maybe some weird Internet incel heard us talking about this and is like, I want to interrupt her podcast because, you know, that's the reason because the world centers around me. There's nobody else that exists. All of you guys are just a projection of my of my um conscious and subconscious but okay cool we are back we are back um imagine if this entire time it was actually like i i had real hostages in my basement and this is them pulling the alarm trying to get me out today not today yeah yeah i mean i would just i i just would love to you know I just like seeing people's reactions when I'm on a first date with them or something. And I'm like, Hey, do you want to go back to my basement? Or it's like, Hey, like I was thinking we could just hang out in the basement real quick. I think it's like really cool down there. I just like the Um, idea and I just prefer of dating anyone who has a basement. Like what? You got multiple floors in a place you're living right now. Whoa, that's sick. It's like, (laughs) Whoa, that's so much space. Yeah. 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 No, I am like, I ain't living no basement life. I mean, I used to live in a basement, but a place where you're like living Mm -hmm. above ground and you have a basement. Who are you? Mr. Millionaire. Um, which you mm-hmm, literally have to mm-hmm. be now to get that kind of stuff yeah above above ground living yeah I'm lo- wait i want to get back i i'm like we were talking about so many things oh yeah we were shitting on people who shit on people unnecessarily yeah. but, but however i i'm a little bit still hung up on the i mean hooked up on the on the hooking thing oh yeah, uh, yeah we, like we, yeah we know uh, like so uh, okay so they're not having sex while they're suspended they're just being hooked from the seal and is this like 
how high up are they? Oh, they can get is pretty high. Is this also a live show situation? High. They can get pretty high. Like they can get like several stories up. They'll like suspend them from a ceiling and like a warehouse kind of thing and just like. Oh, I remember what I wanted to ask you because that made me think. I'm not sure if we've really gotten into the weeds of bondage type stuff mm. on the pod. Yeah. Um, can you tell me, I think you have more exposure to that than me. Can you tell me more about some like interesting levels of bond? Like, cause the hook thing, I had never heard of that. I mm. think, you know, the, the casual sex, I mean, not casual sex person, the casual sex knowledge person, you, you know what I mean? The average person's knowledge of sex when they, when they think BDSM, it's just the typical like, oh yeah, like whips and chains and slapping and, and whatever. But I want to hear about like, you know, if you're an advanced bonded user mm -hmm. what's go what's going on that's interesting and not just the i think it's like the mainstream stuff the complexity of the knots and the and the tying up that they're doing and then how they use it like how you're being bondaged and then like whipped and all that kind of stuff and i think the like pain aspect of it and like the build up to it is like a whole thing in itself and there's a whole like world around it and you also need to like trust the person you're doing like a huge amount because they're literally like taking control of your whole body which i think leads into like what makes it erotic and fun it's like mm. i don't know That'd be something that I would think I would I indulge in, like going to a theme park or something. Like, I, I don't know mm. if I would like get all the stuff, but if I went to a place where there was the things and like, maybe you did a class where it's like you and your lady go and you learn how to like tie her up and do all the stuff and it's like hot and all those things. And then it's like, maybe that sounds way more interesting than a cooking class because oh, oh no, God, the hooking, I mean... you need to be about that life. You need to be about that shit. Oh, sorry. I said cooking. Oh, cooking. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, the cooking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, because oh, God, whenever I hear of somebody suggesting that you know you meet those couples and they're like yeah we're doing a cooking class and then you see the fog in their eyes and just how <laughs> deeply unhappy they are when like you know i i see that there's like a twitch going on when they're like yeah we're going to a cooking class and, and like, like Whoa, you need i'm to totally gonna because like uh, I just don't know there are just so many things I'd rather do than a cooking than class. a cooking class yeah. like killing myself yeah which way which you know i said i don't think you should do that yeah but we're... like in order of but i also don't think that i mean no 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 the cooking I mean, class is more people find joy in different ways see now i'm being a hypocrite because we were just talking about you know people shitting on polyamory when they're monogamous this is me <sighs> being like i'm shitting on cooking classes when i don't take cooking classes i mean it's a little different but it is kind of the same so you know if you and your significant other or if your romantic date is doing a cooking class or like, oh, even worse, just those, um, actually, I don't know. But I, also, worse, you I know, think like it's people, the, in the those... way you're making fun of it. Like if you make fun of polyamory or monogamy or cooking class, whatever it is, yeah. you're making fun of it in a jovial way. We're making fun of like, that's cringe. That's lame. You're a dork. Like it's, we're not saying like, oh, you should change your lifestyle or like actually going after it to like ruin this thing and make it seem like immoral or the fall of society. It's like, yeah, everything is in place to be made fun of in a fun, joking way where it's all jokes and we understand it's a joke. Even if that joke offends you, it's like, sorry, you got offended. That's not within the roof. We're not going to refine jokes to not offend you. But it, it, imagine I just start a Kickstarter right after this. That's like ban all cooking bad classes. Cooking classes get cooking classes like, out of society um but yeah, yeah. that's your th i mean that's because like when i hear people are doing that that's i'm like i wonder how much longer the relationship is going to last <laughs> yeah it's not fun um, to us we wouldn't do stuff like that no that's not yeah no, like a bondage class yeah that does sound actually like pretty cool that's something i would want to uh, uh check out with a with a yeah. lady like like going like have you ever been to a, like a sex club with a partner huh have i no actually have you yeah 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 it's very fun i really like it it's it's a really good time. When was the last time you did that? It's been a while because I haven't dated anyone in a long time. Um, and there's some in New York that I do want to check out. Uh, and I did go. Could you just go solo? Like, do you need a partner to go? As a dude, it is kind of like, I mean, you want to go there and fuck. I don't want to just go there and hang out. And it's a, a, a sex club has like one of the worst. I mean, I don't know if they're all like that, but the ones I've been to have like horrible ratios because there's a lot yeah. of dudes going thinking like, I'm, this is where I'm going to get pussy and it's like no no no. this is where you like bring a chick and you like have fun and you do stuff and then maybe there's a couple there and you swap or something or like off chance there's a single chick there that is like uh, looking i think you're better off to, you might find a single single woman there for like some of the events like if they do like an orgy event 
but usually those places uh, as they should be it's like harder for single dudes to get in and very easy for single women to get in because they're trying to yeah, get women in there because obviously dudes are way more likely to be like oh my i can go to a place that everyone's fucking there that sounds sick mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. so yeah i would want to go with a person and like go and fuck so what did you do with you okay so the last time you were at a sex club with a partner which was a while ago yeah. what actually happened what did you guys end up doing uh, well the the one we went to was great this is one in toronto called oasis i really like it and there's like several floors and different stuff like the main floor has like a hot tub and sauna and like uh a heated pool um oh wow so it's like a spa yeah and you can like walk around naked and everything and then the middle floor has like a big ballroom where they'll do events but you can also like fuck in there in front of a bunch of people if you want to and then they have a dungeon that has like all these different dungeon things which is like that's great because i'm not gonna Mm -hmm. get this stuff in my fucking studio apartment but they have like yeah they have like the glory hole thing they have the real estate they they have the real estate for it um and they have like all these different dungeon things like they have the swing and they have like the i I don't even know what it would be like you know like that the swing yeah you know like a sex swing uh what's a sex swing you know? for the people who are listening so a sex and swing also i'm not i'm not trying to admit that i don't know what it is i'm just gonna you know it's like a swing i have the right to remain silent is a swing you can sit on and then someone can fuck you on the swing so you can have that like momentum of like sliding back and forth and they're kind of you're standing and they're on like a mobile thing where you can fuck them um I'm just trying to understand the physics of that. So it's like, okay, so if I'm on a swing, because like, if it's swinging, you know, back and forth, I want to make sure that the hole and the dick are aligned so that it's not like every time I swing back, if it misses the dick, it causes some sort of injury. Like, how do you ensure that the penetration is lined up with every swing? Well, you keep it. You're not doing like huge swings here. You're not like it's not like a swing on a playground. You're not like really letting it fly here. OK, saying, that's what I was envisioning. Yeah, OK, no, no, wait, no, no. let me just look at the thing. Yeah, you see there's like that you str- sent me. straps and stuff. It's more so like. You can be standing, your partner's in it. They're kind of suspended in the air. Oh, oh yeah. It's like a sex hammock. So it's yeah. not a playground sex swing. Yeah. Okay, okay. So like and the, then you see there's like stirrups for the legs, something you can sit in, something you can lean back on. And then you can get like different positions and all that kind of stuff inside your sex swing. Um, and then, yeah, they just have a bunch of stuff in there. And then they have the top floor, which is like a uh a place where only single women and couples can go so you can go up there and fuck a little bit private and they have like a bunch of different rooms in there that you could like so when you guys are doing the sex swing i don't think we use is the sex how swing. much swinging is actually happening like are you guys both swinging no no one person's on the swing one, one person, person stands fucking okay yeah, so i would be like standing oh the so the movement of the swing okay so like, the swing is just moving Slightly. the amount that the swing moves just depends on how long the dick is i'm assuming yes. so you're just swinging back and forth between the using the length of the dick okay i understand yes. i understand yeah, yeah yeah um but yeah we would just go and fuck and hang out and like be naked and like uh fuck in front of people or fuck in front of no one or like and, and they're, they're it's very good there because like people have to ask if they can watch people like it's very there's a lot oh, of rules. I love that. yeah there's a lot of rules to keep everyone feeling imagine safe you go and it's like can i watch and it's like yeah if you pay for a subscription yeah it's like yeah no. If you venmo me right now yeah, exactly you would you think this is going for free we did actually when we went once people the people who run the place were like well we do like sort of a live porn event where we have a bunch of different couples have sex and people just come and watch and you and they're like would you guys want to do that and we didn't but i was like very flattered i was like me mm-hmm. you want to pick mm-hmm. me for this oh my god uh, Aww. yeah that's so sweet so what do you do you enjoy bondage in general um i've the little bit that i've done i've never done anything too crazy with like ropes and stuff I've done like handcuffs tying girls up like bondage tape where you like tape up their legs and like uh, oh like, yeah yeah so like the typical bondage bondage 101 of like i'm trapped and you're hurting me a little bit yeah yeah yeah. like i've done stuff like that and like yeah yeah i like that stuff that's great um but then it was also like the this one girl who i was doing it with she like brought bondage tape and then like once the bondage tape ran out i was like oh, i guess we're done with this now like <laughs> it's like i'm not gonna fucking mm-hmm. keep going out to get bondage tape oh um, yeah there's this um back when i used to live in san francisco there was this event called 1015 Folsom. I think it's also the name of the venue or is Folsom Street Fair or whatever yeah. and it's like a bondage. Oh, okay, you know what it is? Yeah, it's no, like No, 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 I'm just saying bond- I'm just I'm following along. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, bondage street fair situation where they close off the roads or like some roads in San Francisco or whatever wherever it's taking place and people have their own little station, so it's like um fuck, what is it called when you go and it's not a bunch of food trucks, it's like a food 
there are a bunch of food tents, whatever. It doesn't matter. There were just, instead of food tents, there are sex tents. Nice. And um, yeah, so me and my, I actually went with a group of friends just to check it out. And there was this one station where this person was like offering to, you know, whoever wanted to try it, like, you know, you get tied up in this thing. It was like a circle mm -hmm. that was suspended over air. And you, as a beginner, you could get like tied up and then a person would, you know, whip you from behind mm -hmm. and um, you could just adjust the various, I don't know, intensities with which you're whipped. Mm -hmm. um, and I wish I were more exciting, but that shit fucking hurt. Okay. Yeah. Like I was, you know, I did it. We all did it. And I was like, I just, it hurts. Yeah. It I, hurts. I personally do not it like hurts. pain in sex. I don't yeah. like, like if someone, I like pleasure. Yeah. I prefer pleasure over pain. Like if someone, and some people think pain is pleasure. Yeah. yeah. Like if someone wants me to whatever, fucking slap them or fucking bite them or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I'll do that. It's like to w certain degrees, of course. Um, but yeah, even like if I'm hooking up with a chicken and she's digging her nails into my back, I don't tell her to stop, but I'm always like, I'm like, that's all I can think about now is that how my back hurts. You're hurting my back. <laughs> and like, and I'm trying yeah, to focus yeah, on yeah. keeping a boner while that's happening. Well, sometimes it's good when I'm like trying to not jizz that'll like take me out of the mm -hmm. jizz focus. Um, yeah. I mean, I would pre prefer psychological pain at that point. If like they really wanted to hurt me. And they're fucking me. They could just choke me and be like, like, instead of slapping me, they could just be like, you know, no matter what you do, you always be a disappointment to your family. Yeah. Like, and then, then it's like, okay, that kind of pain. Oh wait, we have a voicemail. Oh yeah, we the to voicemail. That? Yeah, let's get that. Yes, get our voicemail cooking. Let's do it. I'm very excited. I love when we get voicemails. It's like because you know we put out the podcast and we just see the digital things or whatever, mm. but live human reactions is great uh, are great and i and i and i really love our voicemails mm -hmm. they're always fun always hey guys i'm a 25 year old asian first daughter and og mel fan i've been following since like the great depression of our time the pandemic and i was following both chunky's dead but also chunky's alive and honestly the content on chunky's alive was my favorite it like really resonated with me you talked about like mental health working at google dating and living in the city and honestly i felt like you were just like my older cousin telling me like life advice so whatever happened to that account i know that you had said you wanted the account to have like a thousand followers or less at some point and it felt like a little fan club but then you started letting more people follow and i don't think the account is still up um, so yeah, where's the account? And also, mental health? Any updates? Are y'all okay? Bye. Okay, first of all, I absolutely love this this voicemail because it was about me. Um, but all it, it it was so wholesome and sweet. And I did used to have an account called Chunky's Alive where it was my spam account where uh my Chunky's Dead account was where I post my comedy. But then when I needed to vent about how depressed I was, I would just post it on Chunky's Alive. Mm -hmm. And um basically, you know, I'm trying to I'm trying to summarize like what happened with that account. So like at the time. <laughs> um, I was at the time that I deleted it, I was for sure going through a mental health crisis. Oh, and quick mental health update. I'm actually the most mentally healthy I've ever been in my entire life. Ooh. Strangely. Yeah. And, um, I, I think I talked about when we were first starting this podcast, how I finally got, I finally got on bipolar meds. I was just too scared and I finally got on them. And now I've been at the, I think I've been on them for like six months or something. That's where it starts to stabilize. And I'm like, wow, I wish someone had just strapped me down in a bondage kind of way and forced me to take it, uh, the, take these pills. Like, it's like that would have been the bondage that I would have been okay with where they're just sort of like, you will be a disappointment to your family if you don't take these pills. And I'll be like, that's the kind of pain I want. Um, so first of all, thank you so much for being an OG and for following from from there. Um, so the reason I deleted the Chunky's Alive account was because, um, yeah, how, kind of how it originally started was like this place in it. And I really loved the community. I loved how intimate and real and genuine it felt. But like at the time um, before I was medicated, I was just I was just going through a lot from the shock of having blown up really fast. And I was really struggling with um, being able to like stay true to myself versus giving people what they wanted from me. I went through this whole thing of like, I want to keep some parts of myself for myself and not just, um, you know, when I, when I started doing content, I had really low self-esteem. So I was just like, yeah, I'm a sellout, do whatever. But then as I started to gain a sense of self-worth, I was like, wait a second, like, 
I'm a person too, and my feelings matter. And do I really want to um, have my entire life? Do I really want to monetize on every single aspect of my life? And so the deletion of that account was like, hey, like, you know, I want to preserve a part of myself that isn't being advertised everywhere. However, um, but then ironically, then I just started publicly posting my more intimate, vulnerable stuff. And I was like, you know, actually, fuck, I am going to monetize off this. But now it's coming from a place of not self-hatred. But um, thank you so much for being a fan of that account, Chunky's Live. And, and like, and also, um, I do hope to do something similar again. And thank you for reminding me of that. And that was so sweet. And um, yeah, I love you so much. Um, let's let's do something sometime maybe i'm lonely i would love your friendship is that weird okay but yeah sorry che that was not about you at no, all i love that that was great i didn't know about the chunk is alive it was a great insight into your uh, into the whole into your uh history into your lore we got more mel lore yeah it, it, into the lore yeah. yeah yeah um and oh i just feel i just feel like you know i feel like we went from you know dick sucking vapes to like holy shit people are getting hooked by their backs to why is somebody pretending that there's emergency in my apartment and you shouldn't kill yourself for a lot of reasons to like oh this is so wholesome like you know we started off wholesome starting with an h and now we're ending with the wholesome starting with a w i love this for us yeah it's been it's been a ride and that's been the pod guys we've been fucking we've been out here we're doing it guys if you want more pod content go check us out on instagram and youtube thank you come again pod uh if you want to find me chay Rain on all platforms c-h-e-d-u-r-e-n-a uh chaydarena.com for all ticket and tour dates yeah, and I am Sailor Mel sixty nine four twenty on pretty much everything. Oh, I'm also on Facebook and Snapchat now. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get on that stuff. We'll see because you know I'm not known to follow through with my commitments for an extended period of time. I'm working on that, but yeah. So and also please rate our podcast five stars and leave a nice review because I do print those out and jerk off to them in a nightly sort of way. So so yeah, please do that. And that's the pod. Thank you. Come again. Thank you. Come again. Bye. We want to hear from you. So leave us a voice message at sayhi.chat slash T-Y-C-A pod. Again, that's sayhi.chat at T-Y-C-A pod. And make sure that your message is one minute or less. You can ask us a question, share what you think is cringe, tell us a story, whatever you like. And if you do, we may play it right here on the pod. We're going to leave the link for you right below.